Hello again, everybody. And this is uh, actually a video about, as I specified to you before, about a scanner. Actually, it costs about a hundred dollars, and for that price, it does quite a bit, a few things. Uh, first of all, obviously, the protocol. There's different protocols when you connect it. Uh, this one is for a Crown Vic, and it connects to the protocol for a CAN, uh, which is one of the serial data. Uh, bus lines to give data that flows back and forth through the modules now uh, has several features obviously it tells you any codes that come up and anything like that but uh, what I like actually is it gives you parameters of live data and if we go through it and I'll make a video about the specific of the parameters what they mean <clears throat> but as you can see over here for $100, that's has quite a bit of information it gives you. One out of 48. So it gives you, and you can select it to 48 different uh, parameters. So fuel system one can always be a closed loop or open loop. In this case, it's closed loop, as you can see. And if, if as we select it, as you see the highlighted part of it, it tells you qu uh, quite a few things like the load. Uh, in a percentage, how much the load is on the engine. It tells you ECT, which is um, uh, engine uh, coolant temperature, uh, which is actually 200 degrees right now, which is you see on that on the gauge, usually hot and low in the middle. And it tells you obviously now when you're doing or you have trouble codes for oxygen sensors. Something related to it is called a short-term fuel trim for B1, B2, which is for bank one and bank two, which we'll go over later on more exp more explicit. But I just want to show you the, the data that it gives out. Long-term fuel trim for bank one. As you see a percentage, it should be close to zero. And for bank two, as you can see, if you have it, a map sensor, which tells you or measures how much air is flowing through va through vacuum, absolute pressure, uh, engine RPM. Obviously, you can see I'm um, right now I'm in uh, idling, not driving, but idling, having a drive, 800. Obviously, the vehicle speed is zero because I'm just parked. So, spark advance, which is you can advance the spark or retard the spark, meaning when the piston goes up to top top dead center, you can either in increase or retard the, the spark before this piston goes up to top dead center, relating, depending upon many factors of uh, pre-ignition uh, and other things and other uh, and other details which will go over intake air temperature IAT you can see it's 118 which is a um, sensor that measures the intake temperature of the air right now the hood is closed so it's hotter under the hood so therefore the the temperature will be hotter of the air so mass airflow sensor which obviously measures how much flow is 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 flowing through the intake uh, air, ch air chamber. So, TPS sensor, which is in percentage, depending how much you have it open or closed. Right now, it's, I have it, actually, I'm not stepping on the, on the accelerator. When I step on the accelerator, obviously the percentage will go up as now, as you can see. Now these all the oxygen sensors that we mentioned. Bank one, sensor one, Short-term fuel trim, which should be, should be around close to zero. You see it's minus two. Anyway, and the first one, which is highlighted, 0 0.1, 0 0.4. And you want to see it go to rich, lean, rich, rich lean, oscillating. Obviously, some um, scanners have graphs. But for these purposes, you can figure out, you can see that it's going up and down from 0 0.1 to 0 0.8. And it's oscillating so rich lean rich lean every hundred milliseconds the computer looks at the the outputs of the oxygen sensors and that's very important so as you can see this is sensor two bank one sensor two short-term fuel trim like i said we'll go over it in more detail and 
runtime, how long it's been on the car, any uh, malfunctions, codes, fuel pressure, obviously 38 PSI. When you first turn it on, it's about maybe 50 PSI, and later on it becomes about 39. <clears throat> it gets that information from the fuel pressure sensor. Now you could command the EGR, which is for the EVAP. You could command it on to see how you EVAP, if there's any leaks. As you can see, command EVAP. So fuel level is at a percentage. How much fuel you have from the fuel level sensor is, is 27%. So basically, how much, see it for EVAP, bar uh, barometric pressure, catalytic, this is the temperature of the catalytic converter, 943, as you can see, the volts of the ECU, which is the computer, 14 volts, that's because I have the alternator on, so it's 14 volts going to the computer. So you have, like you see, see, it has catalytic Converter uh, temperature, 935 degrees. So my point is, for 100 degrees on the ambient, ambient temperature, outside temperature is 48 degrees. Notice that the intake air temperature is hotter. That's because the hood is closed. So all these things I'm trying to point out, accelerator is when you step on the gas. Obviously, you see the 19 will go up in the percentage. Like I said, we'll go over everything in fine detail, but I'm just trying to point out for $100, a scanner gives you the codes and gives you live data. You really can't beat it. It's, pretty, it's, a, it's a pretty good um, um, scanner tool. Usually I don't promote, but this is pretty good for all your needs. And obviously there are parameters up to 400 parameters, but 48 parameters for this is pretty suffice. Well, um, it's pretty efficient uh, to know uh, um, the temperatures, to know the airflow, to know the codes, to know most important the oxygen sensor, which goes bad, and the short term uh, fuel trim. Those are very important. But uh, like I said, I think it's a fine tool. You can always erase the codes. If you have a check engine, you can erase it. Um, like I said, um, you can also go to, depending on what you have, if you're OBD2, or you can go to ABS to find problems with ABS uh, problems. But uh, um, anyway, like I said, we'll go into details. And, but this is just a, a very quick introduction to this scan tool that I found. And uh, hopefully um, when I make the video, the next one, I'll go into the parameters, what they actually mean. So that when you go on a scan tool, you know what they mean. It, do, it doesn't pay to get the most expensive scan tool if you don't understand what the parameters mean. It's like getting your, your license to drive, but you're going to get the most expensive car, a Ferrari, Bugatti. Why? You just started driving. Same thing with this. Introduce yourself, get familiar with the parameters, and then go and get the best scan tool. First, understand the parameters and the variables of closed loop, air, mass airflow sensor, uh, um, uh, ECT sensor, IAT sensors. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video explaining these parameters. Thanks for watching.